want to make sure we get, you know, we just get our hearts where they need to be. I don't want nothing stopping me from getting fine. You know, I don't want nothing slowing me up from meeting Jesus when he comes. And I don't want nothing in my way stopping my progress. And I definitely don't want to go to hell for something somebody else did. And, you know, when we feel we good and we, you know, we overcame some stuff and we good, the devil can't tempt us in certain areas no more, whatever, the devil's going to find another way. That's just what he does because he's the devil. Y'all believe that? So anyway, we're going to talk about this. Don't take the hate. Sound like a Spike Lee movie, don't it? <laughs> but it's, this is very important, y'all. This is very important. The Bible says that in this time that we're in, we need to just quit saying the end times because we are here. Uh, there's not much after this, what we're seeing. So Matthew 24, 9 says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, they shall kill you, they shall be hated, I mean, ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, shall betray one another, and the final thing, many shall hate one another. So uh, this is the Bible kind of forecasting the times that we're in now. I've been, you know, doing some research about different things, and... Um, I've been doing um, research on, you know, CERN and all of these things that I've been talking about, transhumanism, transhumanism, all stuff I've been talking about for all of these years, y'all, it's all coming true. Like, it's all just coming true. I mean, it's just coming true. Anybody that don't believe the truth, truth behind hip-hop is not real, you just go kick rocks. Because it's all coming, I mean, it's all coming true. Like, I'm going back and, watch, and watching my own stuff to find out what's going on. And <laughs> I'm serious. It's just all coming true. And uh, in a, a part 10 of the truth of uh, Truth Behind Hip Hop Pop Life, I was talking about CERN and the different things they were pulling in. And so they're causing all of these big distractions and different things and Bill Gates getting divorced and just all this stuff that's happening now to just totally keep everyone's mind occupied on you know, the, the shot, the, you know, just everything that's going on because behind the scenes, these folks have brought some, some just demons and spirits and darkness to our world uh, out of, you know, the blackness of space. And they brought this stuff to our world and they are just recreating Genesis 6 all over again because the things, the beings and everything that they're communicating with are demanding that all human life and life forms be altered and different things. So, I mean, it's all just playing out like a sci-fi movie. But because of all of this, it's changed the mood of people. So people are beginning to behave differently. Uh, people's patience is, you know, they're talking about the pandemic for the, for the virus, but the unspoken pandemic is mental illness. That's the one nobody's talking about. The suicide rate is up 600% people, you know, the divorce rate, people, I mean, uh, uh, just death rate, murder, everything. Everything's up because people are very frustrated and they, you know, they don't have the answers they need. They didn't live the lives they needed to live or whatever the case, but they're depressed, uh, they're anxious, and this is leading to another pandemic of mental, mental illness. And these are the people that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. They crazy. They're crazy. Their temper is short. I mean, and you can't really trust them. Uh, you don't know what they're going to do. And so the Bible said that this would happen. People were going to be offended, betray, and then hate one another. And that's kind of where we are. So let me kind of talk about this hate because it's very important to understand that you cannot take the hate that is out there into yourself. Okay? You can't take it in your body you can't let the devil put it in you. That's his goal, to get that hate in you. When you overcome temptations and graduate from silly sins that once made you a target of the enemy, the devil will always come another way. Right? When you overcome certain things, you get stronger, 
you know, you don't have to cuss no more. You feel good when you don't cuss no more. <laughs> you will feel good when you don't cuss no more. Good gracious. Amen. But when you overcome it, when I overcome cussing, I mean, it was so long ago. It was before I got married. But I overcame it, and man, I feel good about myself because I didn't have to cuss. But cursing is linked to something. And that's everything you're doing is linked to something. Especially everything you're doing wrong is linked to, linked to something. And so when you overcome these silly sins that made you a target, because whenever you're committing sins, you're a target of the enemy, basically. He has a way to get you because he know what you're going to do. Right? So when you, when, when you do that, though, when you graduate from these silly sins, the devil will always come another way. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, sin, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us do what? So when we lay aside every weight, the sins that easily beset us, we're able to run. We just talked about that. It lightens our load. We're able to run with patience the race set before us, but we got to set aside the weights. The silly sins, the sins that we just, somebody make you mad and you just go off and go crazy, it's just time to stop that. That's a silly sin, right? Right. Silly sin. So we just got to lay aside the silly sins. But when we overcome these things and graduate and those things don't have power over us, over us anymore, the devil's going to always come another way. So you are finally delivered from the emotional issues that led to sin. Anger led to a profanity and hatred. That's where profanity and hatred comes from. Anger. You get delivered from anger, you won't have to cuss, and you won't hate folks. Self-hatred led to fornication and sexual sin. You get over self-hatred, self-loathing, and feeling sorry for yourself, and you'll overcome fornication and sexual sin. Amen. Contempt led to unforgiveness and malice. So if you get over contempt and holding people to contempt and believing that they need to pay for what they did and they, you know, uh, uh, they ought to be in trouble or whatever, justice, whatever it is, that, that's what led to unforgiveness and malice. You get rid of the contempt, you're able to forgive and you don't have malicious thoughts against people. Guilt led to weed smoking, drug abuse, and drinking. That's what guilt does. When you're guilty, when you feel like, you know, you, you did somebody, you hurt somebody, you're responsible for somebody's failure, whatever the case, you start drinking, smoking weed, you know, and abusing drugs. You get rid of the guilt, you'll get rid of those habits. And lastly, low self-esteem led to manipulation and covetousness. So when a person feels low about themselves, especially a woman, when they, they have real low self-esteem, they're going to become manipulative. All Jezebels are, uh, have low self-worth. So they manipulate and they covet. You get rid of the low self-esteem, you won't be manipulative and covetous. Amen? All these things are sin. Self-hatred, anger, contempt, guilt, all that's sin. And sometimes, I tell it all the time, we try to take care of the big sins, and we don't, un I mean, the big sins, but we don't understand the sin that led to that sin. So you feel like you're finally free from pornography and sexual vice or whatever, and you don't understand the self-hatred that led to that. Self-hatred is a sin because you're hating God's creation. He said he made you and you were good. So when you hate it, you hate yourself. You wish you would never hear, why was I here? I'm an accident. I shouldn't be here. You abuse your own body. That's what tattooing is. That's what, you know, them strange piercings, cutting yourself, all that self uh, skin mutilation, all of that. That is self-hatred. Yeah, those are the only people that go to the tattoo parlor. That's self-hatred. Can I tell the truth? Yeah. And so you may think you got rid of or you overcame this or that, but you got to make sure you overcame the source because it's all sin. Hatred, contempt, guilt, all of that sin. Guilt? 
That don't sound like a sin, does it? But it is. Because if you're guilty, then Jesus did nothing for you. And it's a sin. Right? Don't it just make sense? It just makes sense. And these are sins folks walk around with and don't realize they're in sin. They're always looking for the murderer and the, the hatchet carrying <laughs> all of that, you know, just the brawler, the killer, the drug addict, the adulterer, the fornicator. The, the, those are the, the, you know, those are the big ones, but they don't realize all of these other sins are what cause those actions. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be what? Put away from you and make sure all malice is put away. Malice, maliciousness, that's getting somebody back. You know, you can get folks back in your mind and be in sin. Yes, you can. You don't have to go do it. You could just think up on it too much. Amen? Amen. I'm guilty. Conquering these things, when you conquer these things, it brings what? Peace and joy. Peace and joy. Man, that sounds so foreign in 2021. But I tell you what, here at ABC, we've been experiencing some peace and joy. In spite of all of the foolishness that's been going on in this world, we come in here chilling. Peace and joy. But conquering these things brings peace and joy. There is peace and joy here in this house. Thank God. But the devil is what? He ain't never done. So if he see peace and joy, let me go find a way to stop it. That's his job. That's in his job description as being Satan. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant, because the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, does what? Walketh about doing what? So that means he's walking about, so you got to stay sober and vigilant. Just because you pass some tests don't mean he's going to leave you alone. He's going to keep walking around. As a roaring lion, seeking a way. He will get in those around you that have not overcome these issues that we just read about and are down on themselves. So because you overcame something, he's going to get into the people around you that haven't overcome it. Hebrews 12 and 15, looking diligently, let any, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up do what? Trouble you, thereby many be defiled. So the devil is trying to make you fail of the grace of God. When you feel like you failed, God failed, life failed, who you were supposed to be failed, who you felt you should have turned out to be, bitterness will come in. It'll spring up and trouble you. And what will really trouble you is people that didn't fail or people that failed and did better. Then you're really in trouble because that root of bitterness is springing up and then you will mess up a bunch of folks. Amen. You will. You will mess up a bunch of people. He will get in those that hate their lives and who have and who they have become y'all got folk in your family like that that you know the, the just the deadbeat that just will never ain't gonna ever the can't get right everybody got a can't get right right and that person always stir up the trouble it's like when thanksgiving come everything is good until he sit down at the table now he gotta say something contrary want to know what well, what is everybody talking about and whatever everybody's talking about he's gonna be contrary And bring up, you know, stuff and just stir up strife because his life sucks. And yours is better. 
And I know we stay humble and we don't get prideful or nothing, but sometimes our lives are better than others. By comparison. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't got nothing to do with money. Just we, we have happy. We, we have the joy of the Lord. That's better than the anger of Satan. Is the joy of the Lord not better than the anger of the devil? So if I have the joy of the Lord, my life is better. Those that feel they have nothing to lose because they are always losing. My mama used to always tell me, you be careful of folks that have nothing to lose. Because when they have nothing to lose, that means they can, they'll do anything. Especially if they always lose in any way. The enemy can have free reign within those that feel this way about themselves. So basically, they're an open channel for the devil to use. Romans 6 and 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether the sin of death or obedience unto righteousness. So if you yield yourself to obey the devil, then he's your servant. I mean, you're his servant to obey. You're his servant. And so some of these people, the devil can get in and do whatever he wants because they serve him. Now, if you say it like that, no, I don't serve the devil. But every time something good happens to you, they come along and try to make something bad out of it. Or anytime somebody is blessed, they come along and try to throw shade on it. So they are servants of the devil these are the people that see your progress as incrimination understand that your progress incriminates them so you doing what it takes to be the man of your house to be a man period in 2021 you doing what it takes to be a man incriminates somebody that's not doing what it takes you know folks around you can be mad at you just because you're trying to do what's right because when you try to do what right what's right it makes those that's not trying to do what's right wrong so these people see any progress you make as incrimination. Yeah, that's why at the family reunion, they come in and, <laughs> you know, they hear you got a new car, a new house. They come and bring the building plans to their house. Oh, see, look at it. Here go my blueprint and lay it out on the ground. See, the, the, the gazebo is going to be over there. And then, the, brother, have you, like, broke ground? Have you bought any land? Well, no, no, but we working on that. We... Why you can't just be happy for the person who, who has a gazebo? Yours is just virtual. You can't be happy with the person that really have it? Or they find something wrong with it. Yeah, I just got this. Man, I heard you got a new car. Let's go look at it. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. What year is it? What year is it? It's new to me. Why do I have to? Why do I have to tell you the year? Like, what does that matter? It's just, a, it, I mean, it's a 19. Oh, 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 okay, a 19, okay. You know, because I've heard they got some new features in the 21, some new things that they're doing over there at, at uh, Lexus. I heard that they got a whole new technology. So the 20, this, this one ain't nothing like the 21. It's totally different. <laughs> and you wonder why they like that the devil is in them that's jealousy and envy that's not God so the devil is using them to watch you and then you saw and say well see the 19 they'll never make another one like the 19 I heard that the 19 is the one that they you know they, since they couldn't make one like it they had to just change everything because this one right here why are you explaining away your blessing? Did it bless you? 
You don't have to explain to the devil why you bought that car. Especially when he driving a flat to eat. I mean, what in the world? Why is that even a discussion? Why do people do that? Well, we know why. I'm sitting here telling you. They're incriminated by your progress. So anything good you do, they want to match it or they're incriminated because they're not doing what it takes to do better. And I'm using a house and car and all that as an example, but that really doesn't have anything to do with it. Sometimes it's just character. You are building your character. You're just trying to do, do things better. And they're incriminated by that. Especially if they got an old witchy wife and you start doing better. Then she throwing it in his face all day. Why can't you be like Jerome? I mean, what you mean be like him? I mean, he, you know, he, he's coming up. I mean, he's working hard and all that and you just playing the PlayStation. So now he hate Jerome. So Jerome come over, he throwing shade on everything. To feel better about himself instead of putting the PlayStation down and going and working like him. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 13. Well, these are people that will see your progress as incrimination and your blessings as offenses toward them. How are you offended at somebody's blessing? Oh, so you think you better now, huh? Oh, yeah, you think you the stuff now. You know, I wish I could be like you. I wish I could be like you, you know, because, I mean, you have everything. I mean, look, look at you. See, see, no, 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 no. I know, you know, I know. You, 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 you know. And you. Brother, I just got a new shirt. I mean. Oh, the new shirt. See, oh, shirts. It's shirts. It's about the shirts now. See, I, I wish I could. You know, I got to wear this. I've been wearing this for some years now. But, you know, I, I can't roll like you, man. Man, man, congratulations, man. Congratulations. I know I'm preaching it here. Y'all got some relatives just like this. You be like, hey, man. Your blessings offend them. Offend? How are you offended by good happening to somebody? Ephesians 5 and 13. But when anything is exposed by the light, it what? It becomes visible. And that's the problem. The light is going to expose the darkness. The darkness in people's hearts become visible. When the light, when the light comes. So if you're carrying the light, the Bible says you are the what? Light of the what? Light of the world. So if you're the light of the world and you're carrying God's light, when you get around people that have darkness, what is the light going to do? It's going to expose it. So that means that that person sees your blessings as offenses. They're incriminated by your progress. They hate you. Just because you're doing things right. All of the disciples were killed because they were doing things right. They were teaching the way that was right. The devil will get in loved ones. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. You know, the pandemic helped some folks. Now we ain't got to go congregate at Granny's house. Because over there is, is foolishness. Loved ones. They cannot handle the fact that you left and did better. You're supposed to hang around here and be a zero like everybody else. It's in your blood. Zero. The devil will get in loved ones to provoke you, listen, to hate them so he can get sin in your heart. So you overcame certain sins and the devil's going to flip it and make the fact that you overcame sins offend somebody so they come at you so that he can put hatred 
in your heart. Ain't that crazy? Then you got to be the devil. And you are. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Provoke you to hate them so he can get sin in your heart. Hatred is sin. Hatred is sin. Don't think just because you're not knocking over uh, ATMs no more that you delivered if you still have hatred. <laughs> Amen. I ain't stole a car in 18 months. I'm delivered. But if you have hatred in your heart, hate that judge that locked you up for that. You may not do it no more, but if you hate him, you're still in sin. Because hatred is sin. And the devil wants to put hatred in your heart. So many are living in this unrepented state, which could lead to early death and lack of faith for salvation. When you harbor hatred, you get illnesses. You get autoimmune diseases. Your body attacks itself because hatred doesn't have a name on it even if it's hatred even if somebody put the hatred in you it's still hatred your body still sees it as self-hatred and your body will attack itself your body will attack itself to try to cure it because it sees it it's encoded in all of your cells hatred so whether you did something, I mean, whether somebody did something directly to you or indirectly you're hating someone, whatever the case, hatred will get you dead early. Or it'll mess with your faith for salvation. Because if you want to be saved, you have to have the faith to be saved. But if you're harboring hatred, you don't have the love of God. So how do you have the faith? To be saved without the love of God. They're all fruits of the same spirit. Can I preach in here? So a lot of people are living in an unrepented state, which could lead to early death and lack. And the way you know hatred is in you is when you're trying to pray, when you're trying to really go after God, you can't. No matter how hard you try, nothing happens. And I'm not talking about emotional. No. I'm talking about, oh, I don't feel the, the jerk and the jolt like I used to. No. Nothing like that. It's just you know when you're praying into emptiness and nothingness. You know something is wrong. You know when you call on God and it's just echoing. Because hatred is in your heart. He said, when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. Forgive. If hatred is in your heart, you haven't forgiven. <laughs> Amen. Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So the wages of sin, including hatred, is what? Death. That's why your own body will kill you. If you carry hatred. The enemy will speak through these people to hurt you with their words. That's all they got is words. And they want to hurt you. Your own relative, they want to hurt you. They will lie about you, spread falsehoods, just to make you confront them and fight to be exonerated. They drop little stuff. Just to get a rise. They'll say little cute stuff. Just so you'll say, oh, Negro, you trying to be cute. That's all they wanted. <laughs> they just cracked the little door. Just a little crack. To get your heart, get your heart beating where you hear, you know when you hear your own heart beat. You know it's on then. Like, I hear my heart. That means it's on. It's on. We, we've arrived at that point. And I just not gonna, I'm just not going to sit here. 
and let you do that. And that's all he wanted anyway. Yeah, that's all he wanted. Matthew 5 and 11. Blessed are ye when men revile you, persecute you, and say what? All manner of evil against you. For my The Bible said you're blessed when they do that. So you just sit there and let them talk. And after, after they finish, okay, man, well, glad you, glad you said all that. Because the way you have to process it, ain't nothing but words. Words. If words rile you up, something was wrong with you already. There's something in you that needs to be dealt with if words get your, ball, your, your, your blood boiling. Words without no backup. Now, now, you go to swinging on me or something, then we, we have a remedy for that. Now, that's when, you know, we, we handle that a little differently. That's different than words. But when it's words, you just sit there like, dude, that's just words. So why would I let those words transfer your hatred into my heart and jeopardize what I have with the Lord? I've overcome stuff, so I'm not going to let you pull me back to where I was. Because to us as believers, hatred has to be just as bad as any other sin. It has to be. Your negative energy toward them will give them the attention they crave from you and show them that you are bothered by them. You got that relative that act a nut at all the functions. He acts a fool. He acts a nut. Everybody knows he's a fool and a nut. Before he start, everyone grabs a ringside seat. They know he's going to do the fool. They talk about it on the way there. So what is his job? His job is to get a rise out of you. So you can do the fool with him, level the playing field, and be just equally as foolish. Because people think you're better than him because you don't do the fool, which you are because you don't do the fool. So he's going to try to get you to do the fool with him to level the playing field. I mean, this don't have to be the family reunion. This could be on your job, your boss or an employee, just somebody crazy that wants you involved in craziness. So they want negative energy from you to give them attention. They get happy then. Because that shows them that you're bothered by them. If they know they bothered you, you care. This is the way that many perceive love today. Okay, now please understand this. A lot of us in here raised by women only. You wasn't raised by your father, whatever. That, in most cases, not all of them, but in most cases, that brought drama into your life. Where you handle things or you grew up getting used to drama being around right and so you feel drama is love and so arguing and fighting is love because you saw a lot of that growing up I've talked about that before you see a lot of that growing up and so you know you draw when you want to express love or whatever getting into it with somebody going off and all that but you, my brother, I, I still love him, man. I love that Negro. I love him. But, dude, we were just, you know, that, that kind of stuff. That's because you grew up believing that that's a love language. Drama. And so people that perceive that will try to pull you into drama with them just to see if you care. I mean, we're living in a nation with just... I thank God for all of you that's come here. I mean, you know, men that grew up without their father or whatever, you can fix that. All you got to do is get around men. Right? We ain't in here boxing each other to, to show our love. <laughs> but some people are like that. So they cause a lot of drama. So they cause a lot of negative energy. So they do a lot of things to try to rile you up to see if you care. And when you get riled up, that does mean you care. This contention will build resentment in your heart toward them and put you right back in the sand. 
And so this is why you can't fall for that. You can't let people rile you up because then it builds resentment in your heart. Look, don't you go to hell because somebody else is mad. I'm trying to tell you, don't you let that put something in you. You Don't you let it. You better learn to let words be words. And here's what I always do. I look in the Bible and I see the way they talked about Jesus. Now, if they're going to talk about Jesus like that, the devil would talk about anybody. And if Jesus took it and didn't say nothing, I can take it and not say nothing. Amen. And I can teach my boys how to not to be out there all the time confronting folks and, you know, hot headed. And, you know, you get hot. You hot headed in 2021. You might just die real quick because people don't care no more. But this contention will build resentment in your heart toward them and put you right back into sin. Titus 3 and 2. To speak, e uh, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but what? Gentleness showing what? Showing all, how much, how much meekness? All meekness. That means in any situation, no matter how mad you get, your power is under control. That means you chilling. No matter how mad you get, it's not worth it to you. I know some of y'all can't amen right now, but we're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, so you can't fly off the handle and curse folk out and blah, 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 blah. And they go back, man, you know, man, I, I said some things, you know, I shouldn't have said. Nah, nah, bro, we need to fix that. We need to fix that. Amen. Especially when it's your family. You know, you don't get many of those. You're just not going to get many of those. Going off on your wife and calling her stuff and cussing her out and all that. You're not going to get many of those. Resentment builds up in a woman real fast. She's going to stop liking you. She's going to stop liking you. So, he said, speak no evil of no man. Don't be brawlers. Be Gentle, showing what? All meekness. Power under control whenever folks try to rile you up. The devil wants to stop all your victories and make you succumb to his hatred of humans. So the devil hates humans. He, you know that, right? He hates human beings because we're God's beloved creation. That's why he hates us. And because he hates us, he wants us to hate each other. Because when you hate humans, you just like him. So he wants to stop all your vic victories and make you hate a human. The only one. If he can get you to just hate one person, you hate a human. If hatred is in your heart, you're in sin. But God, ain't it lawful for me to like hate somebody that did me wrong? They don't have to know I hate them. <laughs> no, your body knows you hate them. And you in sin. And it's going to manifest. And you're going to get sick. And you're going to get dead. That's why, and think about it like this. You're going to let somebody do all that to you? What kind of power do they have over you? Your whole life has changed because of your hatred toward a person? If he can make you hate people, you will be just like him. God loves us, and he doesn't want us to hate or wish harm on the people that persecute. Do I need to say that again? Because <laughs> you know you be wishing harm. <laughs> I'm not wishing nothing bad on them. But if, if, if he befall on some bad times, I ain't going to say I'm going to be mad. <laughs> yeah, that's wishing harm on somebody. You just did it indirectly. You still wishing harm. You sitting back waiting, waiting on harm to happen. You wishing harm on somebody. God doesn't want us to hate 
or wish harm on the people that persecute us. Matthew 5 and 44 says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Who said that? Who's talking? Love your enemies. Bless them that what? Curse you. Do good to them that what? Hate you. And pray for them that what? Took your money and didn't pay you back? Still owe you five whole dollars. If you hate somebody over five dollars, something else is wrong. Let me tell you that now. Something else is wrong. I don't even know if the gas pump stops at five anymore. It starts at five. As soon as you put it in, it's at five. <laughs> That's <laughs> Amen. And and you know, the way I fix, you know, I I'm I don't like lending money and folks owing me money. That you know, that that does raise uh, you know, I grow, I used to back in the day, I would grow horns behind that kind of stuff. So once I got saved for real, really saved for real, I fixed that because I found the scripture that said when you give, you're not supposed to expect it back. So when people ask me, hey, man, can I borrow some money? I said, look, I'm not going to lend you the money. I'm going to give you what I can give you. And when I give it to you, I'll, I'll never expect it back. I, you don't owe me anything. That way I let them off the hook and let myself off the hook. So every time I see them, I don't be seeing a 20. <laughs> Especially when you need that mug. <laughs> So that's the way I handle it because the Bible said that. So I don't lend money. I don't do that. I don't do business with family. I'm not doing that kind of stuff because, I, man, I don't want to mess up my relationship. And money will mess it up. So I put, I just have some things. That's the way I handle things because that's better for me. I'd rather just tell you, no, nah, man, I can't do it right now. And we still be cool and we do it and things don't work out. Amen. That's just what I have to do for me and my temperament. But you got to love your enemies and bless those that curse you. People will persuade you out of sheer, I mean, will persecute you out of sheer what? Jealousy and envy. Because you're, because you're doing better, they coming after you. They will hate on you and your family because you overcame the sins that they feel ruined them. Man, you used to you used to drink with me, dude. Where you been, man, dude? I gave that up, man. You know, man, I gave that up. I don't go out to the, you know, I don't go, I don't go out there no more, man. I don't go to the dice shack on Saturdays no more. <laughs> I don't go out there no more, man. I, I, I stopped doing all that, man. I got kids. I got my wife. Man, I'm trying to live my life. Oh, oh, man, that's good, doc. That's good. He's sitting there hole in the box. That dude, that's good. You know, I was kind of thinking about, you know, doing, doing something like that myself. <laughs> something like that yourself? What is that? You know how they talk. They talk just like that, don't they? M man. <laughs> man. See, see, now that's good. That, that's good. That's good, dude. You doing, you doing good. But in his heart, he's incriminated. And he hates you because you just made him look even more whack because you overcame it and he's still in it. The Bible is clear that we all do the same sins. In God's eyes, we all do. That, you know, that's us. We got the rankings and the levels of what what, what is worse than what? But in God's eyes, we all doing the same sins. Are you hurting your neighbor? Then, you, then you're sinning against your neighbor. If the greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself, then the worst thing you can do is dishonor your neighbor. So in God's eyes, all of it's the same. So what makes them accuse you of the very things they're doing? Listen to this. The devil is using them to put hatred 
in your heart. So the devil wants a confrontation. He wants you to get into it. with. He wants something to happen so that hatred for that person. It always starts with, man, I, man, I can't stand being around him. Man, I'm, I, man, you know what, man? I'm just going to stay away from them, man. I'm just gonna, then you start staying away from family. Then the resentment builds up even more. Then the kids grow up, and you got to try to explain to them why we don't, you know, we, we this and that. And, and then it's just a bunch of resentment and a bunch of hatred that didn't even have to be there. It was in your heart, and it should have been dealt with. Can I preach in here? The devil is using that to put hatred in your heart. Revelations is very clear about the accuser of the brethren. And this, this just blew my mind today. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now it's come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of God and the power of Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which does what? Accuse them, y'all, us, before God. How much? Think about this. So the devil is accusing us of sin day and night. And what is the devil doing? So how are you accusing us and you're the one provoking it? He's provoking and then accusing. And that's what people do. They provoke you to accuse you. It's a hate trap. When we can pray for our enemies and understand that they are only allowing the devil to work through them like he once worked through us. The devil ever worked through any of y'all? How many of you have the devil worked through before? Who in here the devil has never used you in any way? <laughs> Don't raise your filthy hand. <laughs> you, know, you know better than that. Yeah, but if we can pray for our enemies and understand that they are only allowing the devil to work through them like he once worked through us, then we can love them in spite of it all. Because you got to remember yourself. You was out there. You, you was out there. You was the idiot at the, at the Thanksgiving table. You was the pimp player and the money taker. See, y'all too young, y'all... No, you got to be like 40 something to know that. That's what, we used <laughs> That's what we used to be in the streets. The pimp player, the money taker. You was once like that. And God saved you. So you were an enemy for someone before. You were a hindrance to someone before. You made someone hate you before. <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. They were doing good until they got around you. So you got to be able to pray for your enemies and understand that they are only allowing the devil to work through them like he once worked through you. Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, do what? Restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness, considering who? Thyself lest thou also be tempted. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be in fellowship with them all. Amen. Now, understand something. You know, if it's family members and y'all just talking a little yakety yak in the family and all that, that's one thing. But if it's somebody that is actively trying to really harm you or your family, then you got to, you know. <laughs> all right, then. You can forgive them, but you got you, you to keep it moving to protect yourself. Amen. Amen. You cool with old little Willie on the street, but you know, he kind of hollered at your wife one day. You know, I forgive you. Bro, I don't need to see you no more. And we live next door and I don't need to see you. So you tell me the time you getting going outside. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. That's not forgiveness. But I ain't inviting you. Dude, you ain't, you ain't coming over to eat or nothing. Can I say a, a, amen? You're not, you can't come eat, bro. Not at my house. Not while my wife is here. 
Amen. So sometimes forgiveness, you, you got to break the fellowship. Amen. I have preacher friends, uh, well, there were preacher friends, whatever. Things went down. Bro, I, just, I have to, I, I got to put the distance there. I don't hate you. I, you know, we cool. I still love you. But because I love you, I got to put the distance there because you're a hindrance to what God has called me to do. Amen. You can't be in my life. There is a difference between forgiveness and privilege. You get my forgiveness, but you lose certain privileges if you remain contentious and unrepentant. Titus 3 and 10, a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition, a man that just won't get it right, the Bible says, reject him. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. So the Bible doesn't say we got to be around everybody all the time. Some folks you have to reject. Can I keep preaching in here? I feel like this is going to help somebody. You cannot be in fellowship with some people because even though you have forgiven them and moved past it, their motives are still not pure. So some folks you got to say, dude, I, you know, we, we just, we cool. Ain't nothing between us, but we just can't hang no more. You going in a different way, you, you, uh, your, your motive is, you know. Right. Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which what <laughs> this is plain and simple cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which who have learned ye have learned and then do what avoid them you know once or twice a year I get you know they people hit me up and you oh, man you just block everybody you block me and block me bruh the Bible said, I didn't block you, I marked you. I, I marked you. The blocking is avoiding you. Hey. Amen. But like, dude, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna have a conflict of interest in my life. Because you're conflicting against everything in my life, everything I stand for, my family, everything. you bringing into question everything I'm doing. You're contrary. So I got to mark you, bro. Then I got to avoid you, according to the Bible. That's the Bible. Y'all read it, right? Okay. <laughs> that ain't my opinion. Some people cannot be in your lives because they cannot handle who you are in Christ and how God is blessing you. In this instance, you love them from a distance and pray that they overcome their self-hatred. You have to just love them from a distance, and that's okay. 2 John 10, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speak. So don't even say... God speed, for he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Y'all, this is scripture. The conclusion. Ah. I got that from Elder Sunday. There is darkness in our world that we haven't seen before. This darkness is in people's hearts toward others, and they are looking to blame whoever they can for their failures. The only way to ward off this darkness is to, listen, y'all, never defend yourself and never fight for the approval of others. That's it. Don't defend yourself. And don't fight for approval. If you can do those two, two, two things, you'll avoid what this darkness is after. This darkness is after pride, the pride of life. Being, a, being meek means that you allow the enemy to revile you and say all manner of evil against you without reacting just like Christ did. Some people are baiting you in the argument so they can... Finally say what they have been feeling about you for a long time. 
They need your anger and resentment to manifest so they can speak out of an emotional tantrum rather than cordially and civilized. Don't take the hate bait. Look at somebody and say, don't take the hate bait. That hate bait will have you out in the streets protesting. Yeah, it starts with the one-on-ones, starts at the dinner table, starts at Thanksgiving, and it ends up BLM. Yeah. Because you took the hate bait. You start hating white people. Black people. You start hating white people. You got to find somebody to blame. It's just that that's where the hate always ends up. But it always starts out at that dinner table. That unresolved issue, that unforgiveness. Let people carry their hatred and anger while you carry grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Many years will pass and they will still be holding on to anger and resentment while your life will be filled with blessings and joy. Don't let the devil hinder what God has done for you. Don't let him put someone else's hatred in your heart. Luke 6 and 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and do what? This is how happy God wants you. Leap for joy when folks hate you. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You in good company. Listen, and this is, you know, in my own heart, I had to, I just had to deal with hate. Didn't know I was feeling it until I got before the Lord and I, I felt like something was wrong. And as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, no, no. And the Lord just began to question me even a few days after that. You know, you, 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 if you carry hatred, you are in sin. I was like, well, Lord, how deep does this go if it's self-hatred? For some of you, if it's inferiority complexes, if it's just guilt, if it's shame, all of that is sin. And that's where the manifested sins that we see come from, comes from what you're carrying. And so God gave me this information to give to you, but tonight... God promised me that he was going to set men free tonight. Whatever it is, any of the things I just named, if that's you, I just want you to stand up. And if you know it's, you may be dealing with it or whatever, and we're going to get it out tonight. The thing I learned was the church and thank God for the old church and thank God for the way things were done. You know, I mean, as far as my foundation and holiness and all the things I learned, I wouldn't dare throw shade on the old church because I learned so much. But at the same time, in a lot of areas, there was imbalance. And that imbalance was they focused on the, the, act, the reactions of people. Basically, we react reacting to sin. So when you fell into something that, you know, was against what they say, if you, you know, uh, got somebody pregnant, they'd make you come up in front of the church and repent and you and the pregnant girl, whatever. Or if you, you know, uh, cuss somebody out or just all of those outward manifestations, they would attack those and address those. But they, wasn't, they weren't really addressing the root cause of it in a lot of areas, the root cause. Well, I grew up feeling guilty because at a young age, somebody may have, you know, 
start feeling guilty because at a young age they started masturbating or something that they were ashamed of. And that shame carried on into their adult life and they learned how to hide sin. And, but that it's not the hiding the sin that's really the sin. It's the shame that was never addressed. You see what I'm saying? So shame, guilt, all of these things, self-hatred, uh, you know, I can't pray for somebody with suicidal thoughts because there is something else wrong that's causing you to have it. It's a way you feel. You feel like your life means nothing. That's self-loathing. That's a sin. You see what I'm saying? But it's about to try to make you in your life. So we have to deal with the emotional issue. What is causing this? And so when I felt that in me and, I, and, the, and God spoke it to me after I took that test, he said, the devil is trying to put hate in you so that you will hate someone. And if he can put hate in you, you're in sin. No matter what you've overcome, no matter who you are, no matter what, if he can put that hatred in you, you're in sin. And I was like, well, Lord, what do I do? Like, what do I do? Repent. But some of us, you got to go way back. You got to repent of the way you felt about yourself many, many years ago that led you all the way to where you are now. Does that make sense? All right, everyone bow your heads. And I want you to just think in your own mind, you know you. You know you. So whatever the sin is, whatever it is that easily besets you, keeps you from running the race if efficiently, keeps you from gaining what you need, keeps you from getting where you need to go, always keeps you tumbling backwards, comes at the most inopportune time. The devil is using that unrepented sin. You may repent of the actions that are caused by it, but you haven't repented for that sin, how you feel about yourself, how you think about yourself, the things you've even called yourself, the things you've accepted that others called you, just, you know, the, even just sins in your heart of shame for some of the things you've done, guilt for some of the things you've done, just all of those feelings, blame, where you blame yourself for not being who you, you turned out to, or, or, or not being who you wish you had turned out to be, or you blame someone else, a father, a mother, or someone for where you are right now, or even a wife, uh, or uh, you, you may be blaming them. Whatever it is, the blame, the shame, all of these things, the guilt, the um, anger, the hatred, the resentment. You may just resent someone, the way they treated you, even when you were a child. You may resent your father for not being there. You may resent your mother for not having time for you. Just whatever that sin was, it's time to repent of it right now. So just get that in your heart. Lord, I need this. I need to repent of this. I need this out of my heart right now. I, I mean, it's it's going to affect your wife, your children, your family, your future family, your future children, whatever. It'll affect everyone if you're carrying it. Feeling those feelings will, are sin, according to the Bible, according to God. He said, put it all away. Malice, just wishing bad on someone, wishing something bad would happen to someone because of what they did to you. All of that is sin. So, Father God, we repent right now. Whatever it is, whatever it is, even all the way back to our childhood, whatever it was in our childhood that the devil did in our home, to our family, to our father, to our mother, whatever it is, God, we repent of it right now and ask for forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for carrying around a negative self-image. Forgive us, Lord, for carrying around uh, being self-loathing or carrying around self-hatred, God, where we hated ourselves, carrying around doubt that we shouldn't even be here and we were accidents and carrying around guilt that we've done so much that you can't forgive us, Lord, and we've messed our lives up, carrying around blame, to uh, blaming someone for what they did, carrying around shame for what we did that we shouldn't have done, Father God, that was so bad in our minds because we promised we wouldn't do it, but it was done to us, and we ended up repeating the same thing. Whatever it is, we repent of it right now. We cut it off at the root right now. 
so that the root of bitterness will not spring up and defile many. So, Father God, we won't go crazy and hurt people. We won't, be, we won't make people targets. Father God, we won't go after people. We won't try to see the destruction of people. Father God, we won't let these things play out, God. Our language will change. We won't speak evil upon people. We won't curse and, and curse folks out and go off and let anger and wrath and bitterness build up in us where we, we're just angry men. Father God, forgive us. And let that root be cut right now. That root of bitterness be cut from under us, Father God. We will be free from this day forward. We won't act out the sins, Father God, because of what happened to us. We will not act out because of the things that happened the way we were thinking. Whatever it is, we repent right now. Make us new. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. So, God, we pray as we ask for forgiveness and we repent, that these things be passed away from us. Dig deep into us. Father God, cleanse us of it so it doesn't come up anymore. Anger, wrath, bitterness, unforgiveness, Father God. We cut it at the root out of our hearts. Hatred, we cut it out right now. Fear. We repent for fear. Anyone struggling with fear, even in this time. If you're struggling with fear in this time, it's because of something that happened in your childhood. Somebody let you down. Somebody disappointed you severely. And so now sabotage is all around you and you're fearful of even trusting God like you should in this time. We repent for fear right now, God. Take it away from us. Make us better men. Make us stronger men. Father God, give us the endurance to make it through this time. And Father, get us over this. That we will not deal with this anymore. And every time the enemy brings it to us, we can point to this night at Adam and Believer's Council, the night of deliverance, when these things left us, when these things were cut from us, where we repented of a sin that we carried for many, many years. We'll point to this night, God, and believe that deliverance has occurred in the name that is above every name. We pray and believe in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, come on, give God praise for deliverance, for freedom, for the root of bitterness being cut hallelujah 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 y'all believe it happened you believe it happened you gotta walk it out now walk it out and repent of it anytime you feel it again you re just repent man that was so simple to me but it, it, it I mean I'm 51 going on 52 all these years and it's like you just never stop learning. It was that simple. I was like, God, well, what do I do with this? Repent. If it's sin, Jesus died for it. It don't matter how long you, it's been in your heart. It don't matter how long it's been there. Jesus died for it. So if you repent, you will be saved from it. Amen. And y'all, you know, I, I y'all know me, so I ain't trying to be a part of no church and be the pastor of a church and not be transparent. Amen. I'm a human being like all of y'all, and when it hits me, it's gonna hit us all in a good way. I'm, I'm I, whatever research, whatever I gotta do to make sure I'm okay, we all gonna be okay. All right. So continue to believe God for this. Don't let the devil bring it up no more. We ain't going to be walking around here with hatred, anger, none of this stuff in our heart that's manifesting into bad actions. Amen? We're going to live this life, and we're going to be good with Jesus when he returns. Amen? Amen. You may be seated.